Hey Webbers, I'm Andy, and welcome to the web venue. Still just a wall, as you can see, but in the previous video, you guys seen me unbox and house the springtails. In this one, I'm gonna show you how I made their home. Now, as you know, springtails are pretty simple animals. You don't need a whole bunch of things to cultivate them to create a culture. You can have a Tupperware, any any size Tupperware really. It can be bigger than this, it could be smaller, whatever you know size culture that you want to have you could pretty much make so long as you you know obviously care for it and you know feed them the appropriate amount based on the size of your culture. We got some clean water here for them you know springtail approved water. We got the hammer for crushing this the lumpwood charcoal. So now the lumpwood charcoal is it's a good medium for them to live on. I'm not entirely sure why, but it is. So that's what this is. That's pretty much all you need. To feed them you need rice or, or like yeast, but basically they don't eat the rice. The rice molds in there and they eat the mold off of it. That's how that works. But they're, they're really easy to care for. You don't gotta worry about too much and they don't, they don't take a lot of air, obviously. They're tiny creatures. Some of you guys have probably noticed that this says Ultra Seal on it and there's no holes in it, so how are they supposed to breathe? Well, they don't use a lot of air, so there's no need for holes and they're rather tiny and they can jump, so they would more than likely jump through the holes. So, I'm not gonna keep this fully sealed. I'm only have two, two sides sealed and the other two will be open so the air can get through. They don't need a whole lot of air. So it's no big deal, that'll be plenty. So that's pretty much all you need for a springtail culture. I'm gonna go crush up some charcoal and I'll be right back. Hey Webbers, it's me, Andy, and I'm here recording over this footage. Uh, you should be seeing me pour charcoal in and break apart charcoal. I have a lot of this footage. You're probably not gonna see as much as I have. I'll be cutting it down but I wanted to explain a few things over this so to give you guys some knowledge of what I learned from this and if you guys are looking to build your own culture or looking to do this at any time in the future you'll have some knowledge based off of how I experienced it as you can see I'm pouring the charcoal into a cardboard box if you're gonna do this I would recommend I mean you could use any type of box honestly I would recommend using a disposable box, like a cardboard box, like I'm using, because it does make quite a mess. There's a lot of dust and a lot of leftover bits, and it's much easier just to be able to throw away the box with all the stuff inside. You don't have to worry about kind of like a messy cleanup. Uh, so definitely recommend some kind of disposable box, like a cardboard box that I'm using. I would definitely, like I said earlier, uh, there's a there's a lot of particles and dust and stuff that gets created when you're smashing up charcoal. I know, like. Imagine that, crazy, right? Because of this, I would definitely recommend some kind of eye protection, you know, glasses, safety glasses, anything really. But more importantly, I would recommend a mask of some kind because there's a lot of dust that comes up and, you know, it, it, it definitely, you'd definitely be breathing it in if you don't have a mask, if you decide to do this. And also, I did this inside my house because, first of all, the sound quality would be horrible outside. And secondly, it was late at night, so also the lighting would be horrible. Ultimately, I decided to do it inside my house, which, you know, left a bit of a mess, as you can imagine. If you're going to do this, I would definitely recommend doing it outside. It would just be easier, so that there's less of a mess for you to worry about. Coming up shortly, you're about to see me uh, start lifting up chunks of the charcoal. These size chunks are a little bit large. You could definitely break them down farther than I did, and you'd be perfectly fine. The size really doesn't matter too much. It's more of a preference thing, but so long as they're not too big and they're not too small, it should be fine. Being a little bit smaller than mine, I think would be perfect. Like I said, it's not, you don't have to be super worried about it. It can, it, it'll, if you're breaking it anywhere near the size of mine, you'll be fine. About the charcoal, I purchased a five pound bag of lumpwood charcoal and I used not even half of that in this video. And then once I broke down all the charcoal, I used, I used about half of that box that you see. And I had a rather large container that I was putting the, the culture into. Unless you like barbecuing a lot or are planning on making a very large culture, 
then I would recommend you get a, the smallest bag of lump wood charcoal you can find. And I would recommend that you use less charcoal than I did in this video because I only used about half of this for my large container. So unless you're using something, you know, larger than mine, don't even don't even bother putting as much as I did in. But I mean, it's all up to personal preference and how big you want your culture to be. It's completely up to you guys. So yeah, I think that's about it. I think that about wraps up everything I want to talk about. And I hope, you know, my experience with this helps you guys you make better decisions if you decide to make your own culture. That's about everything I have to say on this. Onward to the rest of the video. All right, now that we've finished crushing the charcoal and we're getting the perfect size charcoal for the spring tails, you can clean and rinse your charcoal off with purified water if you want, but you don't have to, it's not necessary. I did, that's why it's wet for me. I'm gonna put it in. That's probably pretty good. Just a bit more. That's probably perfect. Now that we finished putting the charcoal in the tub, which is where we're gonna keep the springtails. If you look at it here, you can put the water in pretty soon, but look there. It's looking real nice. The future home of my springtail culture. And hopefully yours, if you choose to get one, will look pretty similar to this. They're not very complicated. Now I need to put the purified water in. You only need about an inch or an inch and a half. Not a whole lot of water. You don't need a lot. They're small. They don't drink a lot of water. All right, now that there's charcoal in our container, purified water in our container, we can Close this bad boy up. All right, so I said I needed about an inch to an inch and a half of water. It looks like I got just a little over an inch and a half of water in there. Should be fine, no problem. So there we go. We got a perfect, perfect home for our little buddies, the spring tails. Just like that, we have a spring tail culture ready to be seeded with spring tails. It's got the charcoal, it's got the water, the container, I mean, Everything's perfect in this thing. All we gotta do now is put the springtails in. This is gonna be a perfect home for some springtails. And I am going to put some in very shortly. If you're at all interested in getting a culture of your own, then maybe leave a like, maybe subscribe. You can find the web venue on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Minds. They should all be like right here. I also have all the links down below. I'm very open to feedback, guys. If you have any feedback whatsoever, whether it's criticism, advice, ideas, tips on how I can, you know, better take care of these animals or how I could better, you know, produce videos for you guys, whatever it is, I'm open to all feedback. And I hope you enjoyed watching me create this culture for the springtails I'm about to put in here. But thanks for watching. Have a good day. I'll catch you webbers later.